Hi everybody, it's Dr. Vanessa, the people's nephrologist. This time I'd like to talk with you about kidney biopsy. So a few months ago, a friend of a friend reached out because their very young 21 year old family member was having a really hard time. In and out of the emergency room, nobody really knew what was going on with her kidneys. She ended up needing to start dialysis within a few days of uh, me speaking with them. And um, turns out that she had been in care, but really tried to run away when her nephrologist recommended biopsy. And I get it. It can be very scary. Um, but this is why I wanted to make this video to take some of the fear out, because if we recommend a biopsy, it's because we, we think you really need it, because we think it's going to tell us exactly what's going on with your kidneys that a blood test can't do so that we can give you a specific treatment. Probably not going to cure. I mean, we don't cure much. We're not able to cure much, but at, at least it can slow down um, the, the progression of the kidney disease and to put off kidney failure, um, months, years is a good thing because in stage kidney disease, that's a part of you has died. That's, that's serious. It's not a good thing. And there's a lot of collateral damage that goes along with that. Okay. So, um, I want to go through the kind of mechanics of kidney biopsy, why we would do it, um, the things that we worry about, okay? I'm not going to show you a biopsy needle. You don't need to see that. When I was um, doing biopsies myself, I never showed the, the patient the needle. There's, there's no reason to see that. It's only going to scare you unnecessarily. And um, the reason uh, the needle looks like it does is because the, the kidneys are, you know, kind of deep in there. I have props, so let me put this here. Oops. They're kind of heavy, so bear with me. Ooh, okay. This is the first one. All right. So this is kind of a carved out body. And it's, there's a kidney there, there's a kidney there. there this one has a little, um, you know, cutaway, so you can see the inside of it. So what's important is that this is the back this is the back of the person and this is the spine underneath here okay and what you don't really see are um are the ribs so the kidney is gonna the kidneys lie kind of the rib cages the rib cage would come about to this level and this maybe it's not the best representation but we'll say this is your back so the kidneys are in there you know, a little on the deeper side. So you're not gonna be able to reach that with uh, one of those little itty bitty insulin needles. Anyway, so um, what we are trying to get, oh, this one is really heavy. I like it though, it's nice. Okay, okay, oh. <laughs> All right, so this is the kidney. It's three times what a normal kidney would be like. A normal kidney is pretty much like the size of your fist. So um, this, what this shows, this is the outer part of the kidney. This is called the cortex. This is what we want because it has all these little balls in it. These little balls are glomeruli. Singular is glomerulus. So when we talk about glomerular filtration rate, we're talking about how much blood per minute these little balls are collectively doing and so this is a cutout from here enlarged 120 times um, and so it shows you these little balls deeper are, I'm well larger and all of this is like um, these tubules uh, that have uh, very different functions um, throughout to make sure that um, you know some parts can uh, let water go through some don't um, controls all the electrolytes and you know other like um, 
calcium, phosphorus, all these other things. Glucose is all very specialized. So when people wonder why, why can't we just make an uh, artificial kidney already? It, this is why there's, there's a lot happening here. Okay. And this shows the inside of the glomerulus. Ooh, I'm getting a workout. 700 times of normal. Okay. And basically for each one of these, and there's like a million, a million of these glomeruli uh, in each kidney. Okay. What I uh, try to help people understand is that the worst part of the kidney biopsy are at least most of the time is just getting ready. So, um, and we take our time with this to avoid complications. Uh, honestly, I, I thought we didn't do um, enough biopsies. Um, the reason why we wouldn't do um, a biopsy is when we don't think it'll change um, what the treatment is. So for example, if we think it's, it looks pretty likely that it's diabetes, doing a biopsy is not gonna change the fact that we know that we need to control the diabetes. Let me pick this thing up again. Oh, okay. So like I was saying before, this is the cortex. So this is, um, if this is um, smaller than uh, say uh, an inch, then the way I was taught was you don't, you don't do it because this, if it's that narrow, it's because these little gloms have died and things have shrunken down and then you're um, at much higher risk of having a complication because the needle overshoots this part and goes down here with all all I mean it's like so much so many little blood vessels there and um, you don't want that but um, as I said um, each kidney has about a million when we do a biopsy we only go into one kidney and an excellent sample is 20 okay excellent is 20 so my sense is um, that a lot of people would imagine that we're taking a big chunk out of their kidneys. But um, in truth, and I got in the habit of showing people this um, because beforehand I would tell them, um, you know, we're only taking like the, something the thickness of a pencil lead and um, about an inch long. And after the procedure, I would show them the sample. So I have a mechanical pencil and there's the pencil let out you can see that that that's one we usually do two of those is that right maybe a little longer okay that's it that's all it is so we're we're not taking a, a big old chunk out of the kidneys okay so um the most common complications are infection and let me do this so the sound might be a little better infection and um, bleeding so we um, do everything we can to avoid those by cleaning the area really great when we get you into um, the ultrasound suite you know where they put the goop on and look at the um, a pregnant woman look at the baby that's the ultrasound guided I did forget to say the kidneys move as we breathe up and down a little bit right which is why adults don't get to go to sleep. Only the babies who can't follow directions um, get to go to sleep for um, a biopsy. You'll get instructions on when to hold your breath while we are um, getting the sample and when to breathe again because the kidney does, it, it does like this, just a little bit with each breath. It's all kind of cool. Flip you on your belly. Um, the radiologist helps us um, locate where um, a good place would be to take the sample mark that we clean really well we um, put um, sterile uh, towels around to make sure we keep everything really clean and uh, then we do the numbing so um, having not experienced a biopsy myself um, my perspective is that the numbing is the worst part um, and I say that's the worst part because to give numbing medicine involves a needle. It's a little needle, but it's a stick. And um, 
and the lidocaine, the numbing medicine burns a bit. So first we numb up just at the skin and give that a minute to fully numb and then we go um, bit by bit um, with a, a, a very narrow um, a very narrow needle um, numbing as we go um, uh, down towards the kidney this whole time ultrasound is guiding us and you can actually see the needle as we're um, going in and um, we numb all the way down toward um, to the kidney the kidney itself does not have um, nerve ending so you're, you're not actually going to fill it when the needle is inside the kidney the needle does like um, I don't know how to describe it but there's um, like a sheath um, and then the needle part goes in and then it pulls the piece of kidney out and it goes back in the sheath does that make sense like bloop bloop doesn't make that sound but that's how it goes and um, uh, while I say you don't need to see the needle, you do need to hear it because the last thing I want is for someone to be startled and jump while we have this needle um, uh, deploying or you know actually taking the sample. So I do let someone hear. It's, it's a fairly loud click, but we always gave someone warning like, okay, here we go. One, two, three, click, okay? And um, we do that twice maybe three times if we didn't get the greatest of sample because in between we would look at a, a microscope to make sure we can see um, the the little um, glomeruli. Of course you can't see them at the level that I share with the models here but um, it, there, there's a distinct look as opposed to if you're just looking at fat for example. So that part really only takes minute or two so but you spent like 20 minutes preparing so that the whole thing can be safe then we just clean it up put a little band-aid on it and then flip the person back on their back because your body weight is really the best pressure bandage and where I practice we would take people to the um, the post-op area where people who've had other procedures or major surgeries go afterwards to be monitored. We watch your blood pressure, watch um, when you pee, take a couple of blood, blood samples. And at um, my hospital, it would be six hours and then you'd be ready to go. And then we just ask you to not do any kind of like heavy lifting um, for um, a day or two after and you know just rest um, some places I know keep people overnight as just an extra precaution so that's that's really it and then we take um, the sample to um, pathology and they do all these extra extra thin ultra microscopic uh, cuts uh, slices of this sample and all kinds of special stainings and then the pathologist looks at it all and tells us what they think and from that we can be able to um, give a diagnosis and um, as well as a sense of how if how much active disease there is or how much irreversible damage there is so that's it um, again Please try to get past your fear because it's, it's not as bad as most people think it is, okay? And um, we wouldn't do it if we didn't think it was completely necessary. So that's it. And um, I hope that was helpful. And I'll try to be back soon to talk about another topic. Let me know what you think. Please like, subscribe, share with someone who might benefit. Okay. Until next time, bye-bye.